this week in, in your bulletin, we'll have an insert of the financial report for both parishes uh, in South Windsor. A parish is a territory under the charge of a pastor under the supervision of a bishop. The pastor has care of the souls in that territory. The parish of St. Francis um, is the southern half of South Windsor, um, but the, when they devised it, they made sure that uh, St. Francis Parish took in all of Main Street up to East Windsor because it's the nicest part of town. So was, they were here first, so they got that. So the other part, which is nothing but tobacco fields, became St. Mark Mary's Parish. It was expected there'd be more development in this part of town and that part of town, but only that part of town got developed. Uh, and yet there are two developments going, one over here, I went to go check it out, and one in back of uh, Evergreen Walk. Um, the problem is you, you have to get them to all to go to church. Um, there are 15,000 uh, parishioners um, between the two parishes. And in our financial uh, meeting the other day, we basically said it makes best sense to merge the parishes. They're just linked now. In merging, we do indeed uh, save money because we, instead of duplicating services at each parish, um, we're able to provide the same services. Uh, so I'm writing the letter uh, with the signatures of the trustees affixed to that letter as well to Archbishop, requesting that we be merged. So when you're, when you're merged, the parishes uh, both cease to exist. The church buildings are not the parish. So this would be St. Francis Church, that would be St. Margaret Mary Church, but Archbishop would give us a new name. But we would have then three patrons. Um, so when this becomes St. Elsewhere, um, we'll, uh, it, it'll be interesting. It'll make it a little bit easier and more attractive so that when I am transferred, uh, someone will want to come here instead of saying, you got to do what? The other solution that they thought was wonderful was to create a pastorate saying, oh, this is a parish, but your pastorate will include the chaplaincy at East, um, East Catholic High School and this and this and all these other ministries they want to tack on. I said, wait, <laughs> my job description keeps growing. That makes it unattractive. So uh, there's also a booklet um, that details the sacramental and pastoral activities of both parishes since their founding. This was founded in 1941, and the best statistic is right after the war, a lot of babies. I wonder what happened. And in 1961, there's all those babies grew up and created the other parish over there. And the last page, uh, just bring to your attention, it's the religious breakdown of the population of South Windsor. 31.1% of the population here is Catholic, and 50% subscribe to no religion. Those would be our target audience to evangelize them and bring them the good news of Jesus Christ. So the definition of a parishioner would be someone who uh, registers, attends Mass every Sunday and Holy Day of Obligation, contributes to the financial support of the parish after spiritual reflection on what should be given to the parish, and then finally is involved in one activity outside of Mass. Why? Well, because you'll be happier. <laughs> you'll be happier because it's the privilege of myself and Father Carlos and the deacons and those who minister alongside us. You're wonderful people and you never get a chance to meet each other. You drive past each other all the time and you have the opportunity to spend time with one another. It'll make for a happier, more fulfilling life and certainly an opportunity to live out the faith that you love. First, let me thank you for the overwhelming generosity to the mission of the two parishes soon to be one parish. A new name will be given. Um, Archbishop um, will choose this to symbolize our new reality. In effect, it, you won't really notice. You won't say, I'm going to go to St. wherever. You're going to say, I'm going to St. Francis, I'm going to St. Margaret Mary's. Uh, but under Connecticut civil law, this is a corporation. Archbishop is the president of the corporation. Sounds very cold, but I'm the treasurer. And I have math phobia. That's dangerous. So far, there are some 30 parishes out of 213 the archdiocese that are slated to be closed. So this is not the final number. On Tuesday morning, I was asked to come in because of my experience of 10 years providing coverage in the archdiocese. I've been to every single parish. Um, it's fascinating. And what they've done in order to preserve parishes, in some cases, everybody gave an awful lot more this year to the annual appeal saying, see? Don't close us. Uh, 
the other thing they did is everybody's trying to unload property to build up their, their savings. Um, we put in a request to, it's called alienating property for profane but not sordid use, I love canon law, um, to sell off this very large, I think it's 11 acre, 11 acre parcel, as well as the, the rectory, um, because we don't, we don't need it or see any need in the future for it. Um, we did that in November and haven't received a response yet because everyone put in requests at the same time. Um, by right now, we have 186 priests serving 213 parishes. The average age is 61. I am 50. Carlos is a very old 31. <laughs> by the year 2025, actuaries tell us that there'll be 119 in the year 2065. Father Phil O'Neill will be the last priest left to staff the Archdiocese. Please pray for Phil. Uh, Phil is also a military chaplain, and so he's gone for 20 years, but he'll be back in time for 2065 to take care of your great-grandchildren. The plan of the Archdiocese is to create links between parishes and ministries, but they still want to be able to cover hospitals and school chaplaincies. Archbishop wants to make sure that we have a Catholic priest in every high school and every college campus. When I was director of campus ministry, we went from 10 campuses to 18 in terms of coverage, but there's actually 28 colleges within the confines of the archdiocese. So we have a long way to go to reach um, the young people where they are. Our hope for the archdiocese is to reduce the number of parishes from 213 to 115. You might see an article in the Harper Current about this. This allows for the preservation of beloved places of worship, but also needs to entail the reduction of worship of services. Recently, South Windsor, uh, just a few years ago, had five priests, and now only has two. Uh, this weekend, Carlos picked a good weekend to be off because I have received six, uh, six phone calls for sick calls yesterday, and three of our parishioners passed away. When the time arrives, there will be only one priest assigned here. There'll be a further reduction in the number of masses from six to four. Four is actually mandated now, but for pastoral reasons, also in canon law, the pastor can elect to offer more masses uh, than are allowed because of the numbers. As your priests, uh, we're deferring to that uh, directive, but we're holding off for a while, so this way we still have the number of masses that we do. We're, our effort to make sure that people practice, you know that many of our people that are confirmed, they graduate from religion and don't practice anymore and they come for rites of passages. Presently we have 15,000 parishioners. They don't all come, obviously. They did, that would be a nice problem. The parking would be horrible. Uh, but we want them to practice their faith. Following Easter, we'll be initiate a program called Alpha. It's an opportunity for people who are baptized and are nominal or cultural Catholics to say, wait, what is this about? And to grow in faith, hope, and love, and practice. You'll hear much more about this um, throughout Lent. I'm very appreciative of the participation in online giving. The program was begun by the great Father Tiano uh, at St. Francis of Assisi, and he called me up and says, I have 96 people, and they've given 111,616. I called them up the following week. I said, I have 97 contributors, Chris, but they only gave 108,335. What's great about this program is that when it snows, the money still comes in. No money, no mission. Um, some of the employees have been approached at times saying, oh, uh, do you volunteer? They have to make a living, and they have to receive a just wage. That would be unethical otherwise. 307 South, South, oh my goodness, St. Francis of Assisi families supported the wider mission of the Archdiocese by supporting the Archbishop's annual appeal, surpassing the goal of 60,781 by donating $61,370.01. Um, this is the first time they surpassed the goal. The only difference was there was a new pastor. I called Father Tiano and told him that too. <laughs> Meanwhile, across town, uh, St. Margaret Mary's, 526 families passed their goal of 60000 to donate $177,204.05 to the annual appeal. Um, even more impressive is that we have two men studying for priesthood from St. Margaret Mary's, and that makes a difference 
when the uh, chancery looks at who's vibrant and who's not. But that's because of you. You give the example of faith. And both men were part of both parishes. More in detail about St. Francis. Um, in this time, St. Francis is um, probably in the red about 24,000. We had a business manager move from part-time to full-time, just as Father Tiano's uh, office of evangelization, religious education was closed. So he came back with hat in hand, having to be paid by here because the Archdiocese no longer paid him, along with his benefits. Um, we had the Connecticut Men's Catholic Conference, uh, which Lori maintained for them, gratis. And I asked her to stop doing that because it's a great deal of work and it takes away from the time working for this parish. Uh, we discontinued the shopping card as it declined in popularity. We will be organizing an auction. I see someone in the front pew right now is very excited about that. Thank you, Deb, for your willingness to offer that. And look at all the witnesses. We have plans to enhance the grounds right over here where our seniors come in from uh, area um, homes. And uh, already we have a donor, American Silica, is donating a patio out here. There's a bench out there that's it's nice, but it's sunk so low, if you sit down, you're not getting up. It's flush with the ground. Now. Uh, just so you know, I'll speak about the priest's uh, remuneration, but not the lay employees. Uh, priests are paid on a scale according to year of ordination. Every five years, I get a raise. I am given presently, after 20 years of employment, $33,938 in addition to a benefit package of $26,381. Father Carlos receives the same. We both uh, go to the gym every day and try and eat right because it would be unethical to sit there and spend down your insurance. We're actually paying for the priests that are sitting in the rectory eating burritos. So all our lay employees contribute to their benefit and their retirement packages. Father Carlos, being a baby priest, receives $31,068. Uh, we also have our car insurance paid, but we pay for the car and we pay for our own retirement. So when I, we don't know that, we, we get paid our pension. People don't have pensions anymore, we still do. But it's up to the Archbishop to give you the pension. He can decide not to, for instance, if he thinks you won the lottery, he won't give you the pension. So, and very nice to the Archbishop. Uh, we pay 15% on our income tax and our tax on the housing we receive under an IRS category known as parsonage. The rectory, uh, it's a Protestant country, so it's called a parsonage, but we call it a rectory. Uh, we also receive stipends for all the masses we celebrate. Uh, a pastor can uh, take two-thirds of the stipend and give one-third to the help. Uh, but Carlos lifts more weights than I do, so I give him half. Uh, daily Masses are $15 stipends, so we divide that in half. Vigil and Sunday Masses are $20. If we bring a, a priest in to cover, we offer him $75. Most parishes offer $50, but they don't go to those parishes because they didn't plan for the retirement either. So they come here. So. But because of the less, uh, less the amount of Masses, we don't get as much coverage. When we joined our bulletins um, to St. Francis from St. Margaret, our refund was cut in half, and that's reflected in the report. Um, the electrical bill went up because we fixed all the lights. It was really cheap before. We shouldn't have fixed the lights. The roof repairs to the east wing of St. Margaret Mary's, adding heating coils stopped the leaking issue that was destroying the interior uh, plaster walls. The masonry work um, was done to the chimney because it was leaking to Father Carlos's room and complained, complained. Uh, the walls in front of the church were repointed to prevent collapse after the kids skateboarded on them for the last 40 years, 50 years. We have an Eagle Scout uh, project at uh, both of the parishes. There's one over there and they've done beautiful things to enhance the property. Uh, we added a pastoral associate part-time, Tammy Hewitt, who's coordinating our expanded efforts into the new evangelization. We hosted a mass uh, with Archbishop Blair presiding for the families affected by the crumbling foundations. Very sad, you know, their, their largest asset is now worthless. And uh, hopefully between the efforts of government and community, we'll be able to put them back on their feet. We welcomed a new musical director for both parishes, Michael Zappala, who, are you up there, Mike?
And if you notice, the choir is wonderful, and it's very crowded up there, too. Uh, this uh, video, this uh, homily is being videotaped by our two guys with the, with the cameras up there, and it'll be broadcast again in case you want to check my figures uh, later on on the internet. We have uh, couples doing marriage preparation now, which is wonderful, and we also have uh, people in both parishes preparing for uh, funerals. Uh, we want to make sure that people come to the parish, they are warmly greeted, and, and well prepared to celebrate the rites of passage. We will indeed have to address issues, and I've spoken with Mark about the religious education program um, to make sure that it's, it's more effective. Uh, we have so many volunteers, um, we have to do some, some homework on that. Uh, but we're lucky that we have Mark who's so very talented and faithful to this parish. So in short, you've been very generous, um, and I'm just so in, impressed by your, your kindness to one another, your concern for one another. Um, I've never received so many cookies at Christmas, which is the reason I go to the gym now. They were delicious. <laughs> and I uh, want to make sure, as your pastor, that you have the opportunity uh, to move ahead with the best that is available to you in terms of the quality of the liturgy, uh, the pastoral care offered to you, and always uh, when you are need to be able to, to come to us for assistance. Um, probably what illustrates this best is we have extraordinary ministers of Holy Communion bring, uh, bring the Blessed Sacrament to our homebound. In St. Francis last year, 1,100 visits were made, and in St. Margaret Mary's, 1,040 visits were made. Um, we have to remember those uh, who can't be with us um, and would love to be with us. So we bring uh, your love and the Lord's love to them. And that's the most important thing to report. <coughs>